It was just after 6.30 a.m. We were notified of a woman that was violently attacked. Um, she started out, she went in her minivan this morning with her children, a three-year-old daughter and a one-year-old daughter. And during that, um, an ex-boyfriend was waiting. There's an order for protection against him out of Hennepin County. Uh, she was, as, as he took off from the residence, uh, she was able to uh, get out of the vehicle and there was a uh, passerby that saw that and immediately um, came to her aid and started calling 911. Um, unfortunately, the vehicle had sped off, but we had good information. Uh, officers were able to arrive to her within a minute of the call uh, and started uh, gaining information. Within 45 minutes to an hour, we started having state agency involved with the BCA and we, we did put out an um, Amber Alert. And through this incident, um, once we recovered the, the vehicle, we knew that we now had a, um, a large perimeter area that we began searching. During that um, search, we had uh, federal, state, local, county agencies all assist us. I believe there's at least 14 agencies that were um, called out to assist us and hats off to them. We didn't even have to call for them. They were just, they were here right away. Um, also like to thank the, the resident, the one that stopped to help the victim immediately. And throughout this incident, um, through both uh, social media, uh, media outlets, we were able to get out some accurate information and we kept getting uh, tips from the public, accurate tips that kept leading us uh, closer to uh, the suspect. Um, we were able to get him back in, in the woods right off of uh, uh, Hinton Avenue and 70th Street. He was taken into custody without incident um, and immediately we did get the uh, two children. Right now we have the two children have brought down, brought to Woodwinds Hospital, both to, uh, just to be evaluated. Uh, they appear to be unharmed, which is excellent news, um, and they're being reunited with their mother. Right now, we do have the suspect at the Cottage Road Police Department. We are continuing our investigation. Um, we have a couple locations that we want to check out and, and do interviews, so um, there should be formal complaint charges with, um, within the next couple of days. But after we're done uh, conducting our uh, investigation at the Cottage Road Police Department, we will do a transport to um, Washington County Jail where, where he will be held. Um, I don't have a lot of additional, but if you do have a, a, a few questions or you want some clarification, go ahead. Just wanted to follow up on the, um, the incident where the assault took place. Yes. And then, the, and then the, how he was able to get the kids away from her. Could you just talk a little bit more about that? Did that all happen at the same time? Yeah, um, I don't have a lot of specifics on that other than um, it sounds like he was waiting in the minivan at her residence. Um, and when she got in, got the children, he was able to surprise her. And that's when he um, did assault her in the vehicle. Um, and then from there, um, started driving off and then she was able to escape. But I don't have exact details. I know um, officers at the scene did talk to her before she was transported to Woodwinds Hospital for an evaluation. So the kids were in the vehicle as well. She was able to escape. The kids weren't able to escape. Right, yep, she was able to get out and then he took off at a high rate of speed. And that, was that in her driveway or in her home? Um, well, the, uh, the initial assault did start taking place um, at her home. And then um, I believe it was on, on 80th Street uh, near our Dairy Queen is where she was able to get out. So was his intent to take her as well? I, I don't know right now what the intent. Um, obviously, there's been some court proceedings on the children. He doesn't have custody. There is an order for protection. Um, so I think it was more to reunite with this to take his children. So he's the father him, of the, the children? children right next to him in the woods? How close were they to him when he found him in the woods? I, I'm not sure. Maybe Sergeant Coffey, were you? He how, was holding the kids. He, he was holding the children at the time. And he went without any incident at all? Just surrendered right there? That's correct, yes. Was he armed? Um, the, the canines um, helped track there, and we also had the, the helicopter up. Um, we did not find a, a weapon on him. Okay. Wooded, wooded area, was, was he hiding? Is that what he was yeah, um, as you can back in there, it's very heavily wooded, uh, pretty thick uh, sumac and, and underbrush there. So, does he live in this area? I mean, why was he? Why did he come here? Do you know? She lives in Cottage Grove. Yeah, but I mean, like this area where he was found. Why? Do you know why he took the girls to that specific wooded area, or why he was there? No, um, we actually recovered the vehicle just a couple of blocks from here, and then uh, it sounds like from what witnesses had different spottings that he went along the uh, power lines through the the tall grassy area so but i don't know what brought him there why he decided to dump the vehicle there so. do you know is he the father of the girls yes he is yeah can you talk about 
talked about the Amber Alert. You said you got incredible tips from the public. Uh, how much of that do you know was attributed to people seeing Facebook posts, whatever it might be, or just the straight up Amber Alert? You know, I, I don't know where people were getting it from. Um, I'd like to think it was a, a, it was a combination. Um, you know, the Amber Alert kind of gave out the vehicle, and then I think that probably led people to start checking local sources, and that's where they get more of a, a description and, um, you know, the different spottings that we had. Did a, did a tip uh, lead you to the woods where he was, or was it just uh, a straight-up search? You were searching and... Well, yeah, it was, it was tips that kind of led us, the, the sightings, that's why we kept tightening up the uh, perimeter like we did, because, you know, we started a much larger perimeter, and then as we started identifying which neighborhood we believed he was in, you know, we were able to keep tightening up the perimeter. So did somebody say, I saw him in the woods over there, go check over there? Not or? not at that point. We, you know, we had the canine searching, but we had enough information to lead us to within a couple of blocks. Was that people who had seen the van? No, no. Um, that was uh, people that were s seeing him walking with two children. To, yep. Can you talk a little oh. more about let me, let me also just mention, too, that um, Captain Renzel brought up, we did have a, a couple... Um, Neighborhood code reds. It's an emergency notification, um, so that's that's more specific. And once we identified the, the neighborhood or the area that we thought he was at, we we're able to do a you know more detailed um, emergency notification to the residents. Is that a phone call to the neighborhood? Yeah, yep. It's an emergency notification system. It does a phone call, text message, email. Um, they get contacted numerous ways. Could, could you talk a little bit more about the uh, role that that civilian played? Uh, that person you said intervened. Yeah, well, I, I think that, just that call, like I said, um, officers within the time the 911 call was dispatched, we were there within a minute or so, so I think it, it was timing to get that information out. Um, so yeah, we're very pleased that she was the, the person stopped and was able to call. So it was a woman that, that assisted? Was it a female? Yes. yes. Yep. Was the, the woman injured in her escape from the car? I, she she would have been assaulted in the car. She. Uh, she was injured prior to her escaping. Okay. So what? So he injured her, assaulted her in her home first, and then in the minivan. It, yeah, you can. He was can basically it comes out. Can we go sorry. The basically, the information that he we have is that he was basically hiding in the rearmost portion of the minivan. She was unaware of he, his presence. She got both children into the minivan. Um, at which point she backed out of her residence and started driving down the road. Um, within a very short distance of her residence, he popped up from the back of the minivan, came forward, and then started to assault her. And then they proceeded to where and then she got out? That with, this all happened within several blocks. She would have gone a short distance. She was able to stop the car um, and she was able to escape from the vehicle at that point. And that's where she came in contact with the other female who stopped to help her. Made the 911 call. Correct. Meantime, he gets into the driver's seat. And, and takes off. off at a high rate of speed. Did you get any indication that he was planning to leave the area or was, you know, just going to stay around here? We have, it's too soon to say. We have, you know, we have him up at the police department, you know, to do interviews. So uh, I, th I think the one other thing, I just want to keep saying thank you to the citizens that called uh, you know thank you for the the media giving out accurate information because you know it's it's a large area it was it was a difficult area to search as you saw you know a lot of woods um, thank you to all the agencies that responded it, um, I'm hot just uh, standing here in the sun so I can't imagine what they were going through with with their searches so um, and again all the agencies that came out and helped us that's appreciated so did, did he run out of gas did you know why he stopped where he did I, I have no idea no probably because we had him it, cornered it really yeah. speaks to why we have an amber alert system doesn't it absolutely yes it, yeah. the, the canine was the canine was the dog the one that lo located him specifically or was it just yes. tightening the perimeter and closing in yeah it was the canine that ultimately brought him to that location was it gun was it gunner or was it another canine Another, one. another agency's okay. canine. Thank you. We had multiple canines in the area. With the exception of the initial assault, the rest of this, it seems like, like you already alluded to, the Amber Alert, people being vigilant here, this maybe ended about as well as you could have with the girls being unharmed. I mean, can you comment on that? Oh, absolutely. It was, you know, tragic incident. I really feel for those children, but 
I, I don't think we could ask for a better outcome. So as, as all the different things were running through our heads in the search, um, it turned out, you know, we had initial information with a handgun. So absolutely, this was a the outcome we wanted. So. You said you didn't get the handgun. So is there a handgun laying out there in the woods somewhere you're searching for? Are you worried about that? Well, we'll still search, but we don't even have confirmation. That was just initial information. We don't know what the weapon was for sure. So. No, I don't. Not at this time. Guys, yeah, we got time for a yep. couple more. Yeah. Have you been called, you know, have you guys responded to domestic incidents between these two before? Can you give us a little bit more insight into his criminal background? I haven't had a chance to read what his, his background is, but I can tell you um, detectives had spoken with him about a month ago, so he, he has known the law enforcement. I just don't know to what extent right now. Was that the incident at the hearing class? I don't know where it was at, but, you know, it led to the order for protection. Uh, I have not heard since she was since she was brought to the hospital, but um, she was also taken there for observation. She was taken to Woodwinds Hospital right away. Correct. Yep. Yes. They, they've been reunited. Yes. Yep. All right. Thank you, guys. Really yep. appreciate.